James' words speak to our faith tradition as United Methodist. John Wesley wrote of believers, let him show his wisdom as well as his, his faith by his works, not his words only. Our goal is to be wise and understanding and to show our life through those good works. This is developed by the wisdom that we receive over our entire lifetime. This week I posted the question on our, on our church Facebook, who is wise and understanding among you? Who are the people in your life who are wise and understanding? Some of you have had a few days to think about this, but I ask you now to think about those people in your life who've offered you wisdom. Those people who have helped to influence your thoughts, your will, your actions. Personally, when I think of that, I, I think of my grandparents and all that wisdom that they possessed and that they passed down through all the generations. I think of my parents, whose wisdom I now more appreciate, much more than I did when I was a youth. And I have a feeling many of us feel that way. But I also need to be honest with you, I also find there's characters in movies who give me wisdom. I picture the mother superior from The Sound of Music. Think about that scene when Maria has come back to the, to the convent and she's confused about her feelings for the captain and she's questioning her calling. And Mother Superior calls for her and in Maria's silence she starts singing those words. I can see the shadows of Mother Superior as they move to that window overlooking the garden. and She sings those words Climb every mountain, ford every stream, follow every rainbow till you find your dream. A dream that you need, all the love you can give every day of your life for as long as you live. I get goosebumps when I hear that. As I was exploring my calling to ministry, I kept looking for that mother superior who would sing that song to me and confirm what I now know to be true. When I got back from traveling this week, we were in the, in the car and I'd been thinking about wisdom, so I put the question to the writers in the car and I said, who do you think gives you wisdom? And we all laughed at our first response, Yoda. <laughs> Kinda made me question because my mind went there too. Yoda is that Jedi master who trained Luke in all the, the Star Wars movies, and Luke kept coming back to him for wisdom. The next movie character, Forrest Gump. He sits so innocently on that park bench, sharing his whole life story with the people who pass by, and to each one he gives wisdom. He even offers wisdom when he opens that box of chocolate. Life is like a box of you never know, you never know what you're going to get. And although these are just characters in a movie that we laugh and we cry with, they do bring us wisdom. James in our scripture today writes about two kinds of wisdom. They're heavenly wisdom, wisdom from above, and then what we could call evil wisdom, wisdom that's earthly, unspiritual, and devilish. Heavenly wisdom is that true wisdom that comes from above. It's something that we don't earn, we don't attain it, we can't buy it. It's a gift from God. True wisdom is pure and it's peaceful. True wisdom is, is full of mercy and good fruits. True wisdom is undivided, not wavering, it's not undecisive. It knows its mind, it chooses its course, and it abides by it. True wisdom is sincere. The wisdom from above is one that comes from God, and it is the word of truth. It's that implanted word that we're to receive with meekness. James uses three terms to talk about that less desirable wisdom and that's the evil wisdom. Each word, each word that he uses seems to, to bring it down further and further. 
there's the earthly wisdom that arises out of this world. There's unspiritual wisdom, which arises out of the soul of a person. And then there's the wisdom of the devil. It's literally, it's demon-like. It's that which has control by evil spirits. John Wesley wrote about those three wisdoms, the evil wisdoms, and he wrote that wisdom, if it's earthly, it's not from heaven, it's not from the Father of lights. It's an animal, it's not spiritual, it's not the Spirit of God. It's devilish, it's not the gift of Christ, but what Satan breathes into our souls. The book of James that we heard this morning, it contrasts that heavenly wisdom and the evil wisdom. Evil wisdom reveals itself through conflict. It reveals itself through the destructive effect on relationships. Among the markings of this evil wisdom are bitterness, jealousy, arrogance, and self-deception. These marks lead us to be unable to forgive, and it destroys relationships. In these verses, the conflict James wrote about is one that occupied that early church that he was writing to. But they also occur in our family. They occur in our community. They can occur in our church. In life, we're pretty much guaranteed that there will be disagreement and we will experience it. James looks at these times of conflict and he sees at the core of it our attitudes of sin and envy. He refers to self-ambition, to cravings, to coveting. James sees that these sins, they feed upon themselves and they grow stronger and stronger, possibly until they're out of control. Kathy Dawson, a professor of Christian education at Columbia, Theological Seminary in Decatur, Georgia. She writes about conflicts and disputes that arise in our society and how they are from the earth, how they're unspiritual, how they're devilish wisdom. In these examples which she presents, look for those signs of envy, of self-ambition, of cravings, of coveting. One example that she offers is that many people desire that brand name clothing because they see people who wear that clothing as popular and happy. There's that craving for the latest tech toys. How convenient that, what is it, the Apple 63 came out this week, whatever it is. Necessity, yes, but she sees cravings for those tech toys which enable us to communicate and promote ourselves at all times. There's other means of self-promotion self -promotion by wearing things that draw attention to ourselves. A trip through the mall, and we all know what we're talking about there. She describes the need for the greatest car, the biggest house, and the most important job that we believe will bring us fulfillment. Dawson describes those marketing approaches that capitalize on envy take a moment and recall those ad campaigns that you see that hit our envy, those shiny new cars that look so beautiful traveling down the mountain road. Through these campaigns, we're led to envy others who seem to or appear to embody or have everything that we want, motivating us to make ourselves and our homes in that image. This societal wisdom suggests that, that these are good things, but they're also rich in evil wisdom. The final verses of our reading this morning call for a call to conversion. And when you think about James and when he was writing this, he was writing this to convert people. But these words are also relevant for us today. The verses that we've heard before us, they, they summon up our answer to these final verses that we heard this morning. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. The opposite of rebellious pride is submission to God. 
And James clearly gives us this order to submit ourselves to God. We draw nearer to God in worship, in prayer, and in thanksgiving. We draw nearer to God's presence more than we've ever felt before. We bring ourselves to him, and we put ourselves in the position to receive his presence, to receive his heavenly wisdom. Where do we look for wisdom from above? This heavenly wisdom is all around us and ready for us to receive. As we draw near to God and he draws near to us, heavenly wisdom is revealed. Like every perfect gift from heaven, heavenly wisdom is the perfect gift that we receive from God. When I think about this perfect gift in my life, I think about the people that God has put in my life during the most difficult times. The friends who listened to the anger of life's disappointment. And they've all been there, we all have them. I look back a year and a half ago to probably one of my darkest days when I went before that Board of Ordained Ministry and the next day received the phone call, no, nope, you're not ready, not this year. I've never experienced such anger, such confusion, but I thank God for those people around me who at that time looked at me and said, it's okay. This happens to most people, it'll be okay. Thank God for that heavenly wisdom that I received from those people. James offers us what we could call a grocery list of what to look for when we're looking for heavenly wisdom. He provides us with these markers of the evidence of God's given wisdom in our lives. God-given wisdom is gentle and humble. God-given wisdom is first pure and it's peaceable. Wisdom from above is willing to yield and it's full of mercy. Heavenly wisdom with, is without a trace of any partiality or insincerity. In our lives, we can witness this heavenly wisdom through characters in books and movies. And yes, those characters do draw us nearer to God. But by looking at each other and those that offer us heavenly wisdom, we can also be brought nearer to God. So ask yourself that question, who is wise and understanding amongst you? Who are the people in your life who are wise and understanding that offer you that wisdom from above? In as much as we're talking about this heavenly wisdom in our individual lives, we also need to keep in mind that we are a church community that also receives this wisdom from above. Kathy Dawson offers some of the marks of a wise church in this passage, some of those, some of those markers that we're provoked as a church. As I read through this list, they seem appropriate for our church as we enter into this fall season. We've already talked, there's stewardship, there's nominations, all of the season in the fall. Listen as I offer these marks of a church community that lives by wisdom from above. The first, church leaders are chosen by the criteria of godly wisdom. It doesn't matter their place, their time. Godly wisdom puts church leaders in place. Worship leadership is shared among the church membership of all ages and all situations. How appropriate, next week is Youth Sunday. Disputes are handled with mercy and love. We seek peace above all self-ambition. Another virtue, another marking is stewardship becomes not just a season, but a year-long spiritual dis discipline taught and lived by our community. Prayer is not selfish, but seeks the good fruits that meets the needs of all. Peacemaking and social, social, justice, bleh, social justice ministries become ways of addressing the earthly wisdom that surrounds us. Think about that one. 
peacemaking and social justice ministries become ways of addressing the earthly wisdom all around us. And lastly, our primary identity is measured by our closeness to God. May we seek out wisdom in our personal lives and also in our communal lives that we are able to recognize what is heavenly wisdom. May we not be tempted to follow earthly wisdom. May we be led to God's perfect gift to us, wisdom from above. Amen.